Hello, Buckyball fans and racers. Here we are at the end already somehow, and this is probably the penultimate update. There is an outside chance that Osric might do one later tonight. Going straight into the unlimited category, there were only a few entries. First off, we've got JSpace, who seems to be trying a different ship on every single attempt. There ought to be an achievement for that. At least they're getting smaller, I suppose. So this time in a sidewinder, the nimbleness helped him knock off another minute and jump ahead of Sir Boundness. We also had Arrow Route 66 on the course, who had a nice smooth run, and managed to jump up a couple of places with it too and break into the top 10. Having put regulation to bed, Skur came to the unlimited party, in a dolphin he had specifically built for the race, but one that had to sit on the sidelines watching the Cobra get all the love. Well, it was certainly worth the wait, and in a comment Brewski will love, although it did cause more brain pain trying to change my super cruise style, because unlike the Cobra, this can actually yaw. I mean, I can't help that he's over here spitting facts. Poor Cobra deserves it. Maybe they should install some yaw thrusters, yaw super cruise. Like, I, it is a 2D ship. It's a very nice 2D ship for a 2D game, but we're playing a 3D game. Nevertheless, Skur managed to blast his way straight to the top of the leaderboard 16 seconds ahead of me. Yeah, I suspected that was coming, and I'll be honest, I kind of suspect more is coming from Shea as well. We'll see how he can do with a Type 7 transporter, because if I recall, he has ruled himself out of the Asp and perhaps the Dolphin um, with his different ship every race, so we'll see how that handicap sets him up. But that's a tight race at the top. I was talking with Sulu and thought that it was impossible to break 17 minutes. I mean, I think it's unlikely, don't get me wrong, but if one of them busts through 17 minutes, it seems entirely possible. I was out on the course earlier today, and that big papa approach is just too big for me. I can't seem to get any better. So I'll try again tonight, but no promises. Moving over to regulation. Things are heating up as well. Not that they weren't already scorching. Look, before we even start, just look at the cluster of these times. We start at 22, and we go to 25, and that's 14 different places in three minutes. This is way closer. I think the seasons have, have been a huge, led to a huge improvement, and people are just getting really good at those regulation Cobras. Because consider, consider how much time that is. We're talking about, like, what, a 20%, maybe 20% difference in times overall? Like, it is tight. We had Tobias marking his inaugural run in regulation. He was very close to breaking the 27-minute barrier, and even closer to Arrow Route 66, and slots in just a second behind in the ninth place. Next up, we had Bruski, who was determined to move up the leaderboard in regulation, and determined to have a good time doing it. Although, flirting with Big Papa's rings was not as fast as I had hoped, but perhaps they were just shy. They are very shy. I have real issues with that approach because I keep wanting to come in super fast, come in down by the planet, skirt over the rings, and it just, I get like stuck in the gravity well. Anyway, it was a good improvement though and bumped me up a few places into, oh, Alec, Alec, Alec! Why? Who would have thought that one person could be involved in two different ties in a race? So... We've got Alec with 23.17 and me with 23.17 and not enough space on the podium for both. Maybe. We'll see. Kevin was now down to fourth place, but he was also out on the course trying desperately to get past Mr. Turner. And he managed that. But not only did he get past Alec, he also got past Skur to put himself in first place by two seconds. Unfortunately for him, Skur was in a determined mood yesterday. As mentioned earlier, this was to be his final day racing regulation, so only an improvement would do. And an improvement he got, despite calling me evil, and really it's Dark here who's evil. By me, I meant Osric, and Dark here originally made this race. I, he knew... I can definitely go faster, but the close approaches are messing with my brain. There's a huge variation run to run, and I can't even tell what's good anymore. It is brutal with the different approaches. This makes me feel like something like F1, where you've just got a bunch of different turns on the track, and every single one needs to be approached differently. And I can't keep them straight in my head. And you can't even see where the track is, because we're in the middle of three-dimensional space. You can just kind of feel how close to the planet you are and look at your time to arrival, and oof, it's a mess. 
The variation in his approaches is definitely something Osric remembers from the original running and his scouting runs of the course this time around. Gas giants, earth likes, asteroid rings. Yeah, evil is fair. The improvement was a good one, though, and the extra 16 seconds puts him back at the top of the leaderboard. Can anyone put together a run to challenge? I'm sure many are capable. Oh, I am not at all sure that many are capable. Maybe a few. Maybe a, uh, maybe a few. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some great racers out there. Uh, Kevin, Alec. Um, I think Shea is leaving off regulation this year, but Shea definitely could. There could be a cookie hole return as well. But it sounds like Alec and Skur are done racing. So if anybody wants to challenge the podium, there are a couple of pegged times and you beat them. They're not going to get improved. So good luck out there on the last day of racing, Buckyballers. Fly fast. Fly dangerous.